In Country Recon is a fast-paced, match-play tabletop wargame set in the modern day. It features incredibly detailed miniatures fighting it out with no math, no BS, and no slowdowns. This series of videos will teach you how to play. Alright, welcome to our advanced Let's Play for In Country Recon. Now, this is a live walkthrough, and I highly suggest you guys watch the How to Play videos as well as the Basics walkthrough Let's Play video before you get to this, as we'll be jumping right into it with a few advanced topics, including contacts, as well as dragging, and close quarters combat, basically hand-to-hand -hand fighting. In addition to this, we will also cover some special rules that are relevant to the Forces document where you'll be able to create your teams and your squads for the game. Those rules might change in the future, but it's a great example of how they work in the timing of the game and balance out the game itself. So to begin with, we'll have two bad guys here, and then we'll have our really awesome, I'm sure not bad guy, CIA dudes down here, which will be the team we will control. So since you watched that basics video, we'll assume that I have priority player, which means I will be activating my guys and going first. Now we'll cover contacts first. Contact tokens are 25 millimeter tokens that represent basically hidden forces. And during the operational phase, during the player effects step, each player will alternate back and forth moving any of their contact tokens four inches. So we will go ahead and begin because we're now in the operational phase. So we'll go ahead and move a contact token. Let's put him four inches right here. Great. So now after that, my opponent would move any contact tokens. I would move any, they would move any back and forth until we're done. Now, contact tokens are neat. You gain them from any team that has the contact special rule, and you gain one per team. So if I had two teams with that rule, I would have two contacts. So let's go ahead and end the operational phase and get right into the activation. I'm going to go ahead and activate. I have no teams to activate, so I'm going to activate instead the contact token. When you activate a contact token, you actually place any team, that means any team, right, with the contact special rule within two inches of the token. So we're gonna go ahead and place this team down here. They basically pop out of the token. Then you remove the token. So they're boom, they appear. Now they can activate. We're gonna activate this guy first. He's gonna go ahead and move up. And then he would shoot this guy, just like a normal activation. The cool thing is any models, like this guy with a ready token, reacting to a contact or excuse me, to a team that is coming out of a contact, can only ever roll one dice. So even if this guy was in the open, normally you'd get three dice to shoot him. Because the player chose to ambush with the contact token, you'd only ever get one dice to hit that guy because you're surprised. So it's a very powerful tactic, especially because you can start within two inches of it. You can basically move it to a corner and then pop out around the corner and gank somebody or get some long range shots off. Now let's reverse this and have the contact token discovered. So let's imagine the enemy is activating first. So we've gone ahead and moved that contact token in the operational phase. Now the enemy's going to activate. Enemy's going to activate this guy, and he's going to go ahead and walk up to here. And he ends a movement in line of sight of a contact token. So the active player can either reveal their contact token, or the enemy can end a movement in line of sight of it. So he does this. The player controlling the contact token now immediately reveals it, just like before. So I put all my guys within two inches of it. Probably a better idea to put them in cover, but whatever. Then you, re you remove it. Now, they could be targeted, just like uh, normal activation by this guy. The thing is, they're still considered ambushing. So he basically walked up, and everybody's like, oh, crap, and they all surprise each other at once. So he can still shoot, but he only gets the one dice to do it with, right? So it's a good idea to usually do that. Now, that ambush or that surprise acts, uh, it's um, active throughout the activation. So at the end of this activation, they're no longer considered ambushing and maybe shot like idiots as normal. So oftentimes it's a good idea to put like a two-man patrol out, discover it, and that activation, then the fire team pops out and they're no longer considered ambushing, so they get popped. Let's quick walk through an example of dragging. Let's imagine this poor guy got shot in the open and he is injured. Well, we're going to activate his team, which is this guy and this guy. This guy's injured, he has an injury token so he can't activate. Let's move this guy a bit closer. This model here, he's going to activate. His first action is going to be to move. Instead of moving, you may drag a model that's within two inches of you, so his injured buddy, and drag them by placing them in base-to-base -base with you. So, boom. Like that. So imagine he ran out, grabbed this guy, and dragged him back. Now, that was my first action. My second action can be to move or shoot. We're just going to keep moving. We can't move through our own guy, so we're just going to move around him. Cool. That's how dragging works. Basically, you teleport any injured models within two inches of you into base-to-base -base with you. Uh, you can daisy chain that for some fun effects, so drag him in, and then another guy activates, drags him again. It can get a little weird if you have like four guys doing it, but uh, it's, a, it's a group effort when, uh, you know, Roger gets hit and is down. 
Last thing, let's talk about smoke grenades and smoke. So smoke is interesting. Let's imagine we're using a grenade weapon. As previously explained, grenade weapon allows you to place a 25 millimeter marker in line of sight of you and then shoot it with your grenade. So we're gonna shoot this marker with our grenade. We get three shots to hit it and we hit it. Now, instead of resolving the hits, you may instead place a smoke token in base to base with your target. So even if we had shot an infantryman or something, we can then put a token there and then remove the grenade marker as stated in the rules. Um, this grenade token, or excuse me, this smoke token, then lasts until the beginning of the operational phase, in which case you will roll for it to see if it goes away. Models within three inches of a smoke token may only ever have one dice rolled when shooting them. So this guy can shoot him here. He would only get one dice. Furthermore, it projects basically a three inch circle around it and models cannot draw a line of sight through it. So this guy here cannot see this guy back here because that three inch circle is all the way around it. So that prevents you needing like giant rings and stuff, but anybody inside of that can be targeted. Fair game, just get one dice. Now at the beginning of that operational phase, step two, you roll for the smoke tokens and on a six or higher, they go away. So you don't wanna get caught in the open. So throw smoke all you want. Remember that instead of applying the hits, a weapon with a smoke special rule may instead drop a smoke token in base to base with its target. So I could even throw a grenade at my own guy and then instead of blowing him up, I could choose to say, hey, I use smoke instead and put that token in base to base with him. Let's talk about close quarters real quick. Anytime a model ends an activation in base to base with another infantry model, so infantry on infantry, no, you cannot fight vehicles in close combat. Both players will roll a d10 with the higher rolling player basically winning. So let's do left and right. So left rolled a 10, right rolled a two. Left would then choose to destroy this guy. If you're playing with the hostage rules, instead of destroying the guy, you can take him hostage and you would put him to the side. And if you survive later on or something, you would score a point for every hostage. That's how easy close combat is. Sometimes pistols allow you to roll two dice, take the highest, but you can't take a hostage because you just shoot him with your pistol and destroy him. So those are some of the more advanced rules for in-country recon. Check out the rules for free at www.inxcountry.com and get going right away. Thanks for watching this in-country recon how to play video. Get the rules for free at www.inxcountry.com.